What do we know? Well, today we know that Gerald Lee Page was the evil mastermind behind these crimes. But when this tragedy began, the first suspect was a local named Billy Bulge. <sighs> Honestly, I'm not big on the whole town gossip thing, but I mean, we all knew who it was from the beginning. Billy Bulge. I'm Bill Bulge. Uh, people in this town call me Big Bulge Billy. Harmless as he may seem, Big Bulge Billy and his family had a long and complicated history in Hilford. You know, as uh, the, the librarian and lead historian of this town, uh, I know quite a lot about everybody. But when it comes to the Bulge family, you're going to have to talk to the sheriff about that one. Yeah, well, Mr. Bulge's family came here uh, shortly after the... Uh, the end of the Civil War and the uh, unfortunate defeat of the Confederacy. They moved out here west uh, for freedom or something like that. His great-great-grandpappy Geronimo crossed paths with a, with a Jewish woman who was new to this country who just came here from Germany. Bolge wasn't always our family name. It was Bolgewitz. Uh We had to change our name in the late 1930s because Germany... So that's kind of the history of that family there. And, you know, uh, they've owned the local tire shop downtown making tires, you know. They've always kind of, in my opinion, been in the crime life, you know, just selling drugs. Billy disputes this claim and says that his family has never been involved in serious criminal activity. The Bold family, I mean, we, we haven't really done anything to nobody, really. I mean, we got into a little trouble here and there, you know. The local bar, a couple drinks in, you know, you never know what's going to happen, really. As a matter of fact, Mr. Bulge claims Sheriff McCutchinson has a vendetta against his family. He has a vendetta against us? Suffice it to say, I, I really don't take too kindly to the sheriff anyways. He's kind of a bully. The bad blood between the sheriff and the Bulge family seems to be without reason. However, Mr. Michaels has a theory. I'm pretty sure it's because he's, uh, he's black and Jewish. This sentiment was reciprocated by others in the community. He was black and Jewish. Why else would they target him? But not from everyone. It has nothing to do with the fact that he's black and Jewish. When asked about his alleged racial motivations, the sheriff had this to say. No, no, I'm, I'm not a racist. I would never be a racist. What even is a racist, huh? You've never seen a man who's a racist say that he's not a racist. This is a conspiracy by the liberal media to try to make you think that good, solid, honest men like me who are just out here doing our jobs, defending the communities, are racist. But we're not. No, I don't know what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about. The sheriff went so far as to fabricate evidence at the Bulge family tire shop. You know, the sheriff, with his uh, racial intents, actually brought a pair of socks with him to try to uh, place in the uh, tire shop. The FBI agent uh, noticed that he had socks with him and he said, Hey, Sheriff, why do you have those socks? And the Sheriff, being stupid, just told him his plan. He's an idiot. Sheriff has some real issues with Billy Bulge. I don't, I don't know that whole street in detail, but it's there. Despite the sheriff clearly being a racist, Billy Bulge did have one damning incident that led Agent Haynes to consider him a suspect. I was actually involved in an altercation at an A&W. Uh, I, I, I had ordered curly fries, but the man, he gave me cheese curds. I, I didn't want, I mean, who does that? I didn't want that, so I asked kindly, can I have my curly fries? In a rude voice, he said, No, sir, you, you have to make another purchase to get your curly fries. So I took out my gun, I robbed the cash register, and I left. No charges were filed because the man working the register was a friend of Billy's brother, Bobby. But with this blemish on his record, it made it possible for Agent Haynes to begin an investigation. I know what you're thinking. I'm black. I'm Jewish. A little overweight. I don't shave every day. I didn't do this crime. Agent Haynes would go on to confirm Mr. Bulge's innocence. Long story short, um, I did deep investigating and turns out he was elsewhere when the socks were disappearing when we got reports. 
there's no way I could have done this crime because at the time I was watching the James Cameron movie Avatar with my sister Maria. You know, we just got back from dinner and I said I, I wanted to see these blue people. It was a mind f Have you seen that thing? James Cameron's Avatar was released on December 19th, 2009. The first sock disappearance was on December 23rd, 2009. You know, if the sock disappearances hadn't happened, then, uh, well, 2009 would have been known as the year of Avatar. James Cameron's masterpiece, are you familiar with that? It's pretty good, it's pretty, it's pretty good movie. Oh, are they making any sequels? They're making... Six. They're making six? Multiple people and ticket stubs proved Billy was in the theater at the time of the first disappearance. He showed us his movie ticket, he showed us his proof, and it was during that two and a half hour long epic that we received the phone calls. And there's nobody, there's no way anybody would leave Avatar to go steal some socks. Billy was exonerated. I didn't do it. I don't know who did it. Actually, I do. It was Gerald Lee Page. Pretty simple. Before they could lock on to Gerald Lee Page, the special agent knew changes had to be made. After some time with the sheriff, um, I realized I had to put the case even more into my hands. Agent Haynes began interviewing people in the town, collecting evidence and compiling a new list of suspects with the sheriff in a reduced role. This didn't seem to upset the sheriff. In fact, his admiration for the special agent continued to grow, which made Agent Haynes' job more difficult. It was tough. Um, many setbacks, um, a lot of stops at the local donut shop in the middle of investigations. After about our third donut stop, um, he kept bombarding me to get the jelly donut. So I say, okay, I finally get the jelly donut. As soon as I take a bite into the donut and the jelly squirts in my mouth, I believe I heard a I love you whispered in my ear. The community noticed the strange relationship between the sheriff and the special agent. Uh, the sheriff was a very well-known racist, and so his attraction to the obviously African-American detective was just a very strange situation. So after Billy Bulge wasn't our guy, uh, we had to continue looking and searching. After we crossed all our T's and dotted all our I's with Billy Bulge, I made the recommendation to move on to Dylan Dill Chill Bad Boy Krakowski. Hey guys, today I'm gonna shave a cat's anus. Dylan Dill Chill Bad Boy Krakowski was a local troublemaker and pickpocketer, but he was most well known for his daily vlogs. Hey guys, today we're sneaking into our local motel and we're gonna burn all the complimentary Bibles. Let's get it. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, on Christmas Eve, we're gonna see how many children we can tell that Santa isn't real. Let's see some tears, ha, <laughs> yeah! Today, we're doing the waterboarding challenge. He was not well liked in the community. You can tell he really thinks he's a lot more of just like this kind of tough guy than he is, but it's really just a phase. I know what you're thinking. It's just a phase. <laughs> I can assure you, it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. Dylan lives a consistent life. Every day, he wears the same outfit, posts vlogs, and causes minor trouble. Kind of the, uh, the surveyor of this town, a little omnipotent, you know? Yeah, that's why they call me the bad boy, you know? I'm always, I'm up to no good. <laughs> You don't get the nickname Bad Boy without being bad. Except, uh, well, he gave himself that nickname. He's, he's not that bad. People are always saying, why don't you go, you know, why don't you go somewhere else? Why don't you go make it big, you know? It's, oh, the, the, I don't know if the big city could take, could take me, you know? He's hell-bent on being famous, and uh, it's not gonna happen. Dale Chill is, uh, is an interesting character. He's got a very eccentric personality. Uh, he's been very disruptive to this community, actually. One such incident left an elderly man named Enrique Jermkins hospitalized. He was, he was shopping in the, in, the, in the Publix downtown, and I, um, I took a firecracker, stuck it right, right in his back pocket, 
you you know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just, you know, you got to get a good vlog. You send a guy to the hospital for third degree burns on his asshole, you know? <laughs> I mean, what can I say? You know, I speak for the town on this one that uh, we all wished it was him. Given his pickpocketing skills, Dylan became a likely suspect. I mean, you're asking me when the authorities first came to my house, knocked on my door. I mean, dude, it was crazy. You know, I think it was 2 a.m., 2 a.m. My, my, my grandma, my abuelita had to, had to get up, run to the door and, uh, you know, open it. I was asleep. I was conked down on, you know, on uh, bath salts and bath salts and cleaning fluid. Uh, you know, of course they're gonna come after me, right? The biggest, the biggest star in this, the biggest star in this, this town. But, but to, you know, to really see, to see them coming to my house and accusing me of something like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's nauseating. The next day, Dylan was able to provide proof to Haynes and McCutchinson that he was innocent. I upload everything in my vlog. Me shitting, me, you know, me puking, me getting yelled at by, uh, by, by homeless people, they yell at me. And I film everything, and I put everything up on my channel, um, you know, uh, you know, Dill Chills Vlogs. Check it out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, you know, I gotta plug. I gotta plug. Um, unfortunately for us, this lead also came to a dead end because... Later, we found out he was vlogging during multiple calls of people's socks going missing as well. Hey guys, today we're gonna go see Avatar again. Fantastic film, great cast, and great performances. He too was watching Avatar on December 23rd. A combination of vlogs and his abuelita's testimony proved Dylan was not the evil mastermind behind these crimes. Once again, Agent Haynes was at square one. With a community that he grew to love, counting on him, he had to think fast before more innocent lives were destroyed. This is unexplainable. I mean, stealing socks from under people's feet, under their noses, I mean, I don't know how it could have been done. It must have been magic or something like that.